asked. And if it's okay with you, can we discuss some of those questions sure. today? Sure. First off, it seems that there's some confusion about what exactly the mark of the beast is. And um, can you elaborate a little bit for us, give us some clarity? Yes, I can see that uh, in the questions people are asking about the, the chip and uh, they want to know whether that is the mark of the beast. Now, that's a very interesting topic and I know that uh, in the world out there the thinking amongst evangelicals is that the mark of the beast is, an, is a chip that is implanted either in the hand or in the forehead and basically works like a bank card with all your details as to who you are, what you are, uh, plus more things of course, what your heart rate is, what you're what, etc, etc. And is that the mark of the beast? Now, uh, you have to approach this in a biblical fashion. What is the beast and what is his mark? And the only one that can tell you what the mark is and what the beast is, is the Bible itself. Because that's where we're dealing with these issues. Now, the Bible tells us who the beast is. Now, a beast, according to the Bible, is a political system. We have that definition in the book of Daniel. These four beasts are four kings or kingdoms that will arise. So it's a political system. Yes. A woman in the Bible is a biblical system. So if you have a, is a, is a church, in other words. So if you have a woman riding a beast, then you have a woman controlling the political system. That's basically what it means. Yes. So who is the beast? Well, you have to go to Revelation chapter 13 and then you will have a description of the beast. And the beast in Revelation chapter 13 is a conglomerate of all the beasts of Daniel chapter 7, where you had the first beast, which was like a lion, and the second one like a bear, and the third one like a leopard, and the, third, the fourth one the terrible beast with ten horns, and then a little horn appearing, etc. Yes. And uh, in, in the book of Revelation, that first beast has all of those components incorporated in it, and all the reformers, whether it was Martin Luther or whether it was John Knox or whether it was Calvin or whether it was one of the evangelical preachers later like Wesley or Spurgeon, all of them were agreed, given the criteria that are mentioned, that the system described is that of the Roman Catholic system. Yes. The Roman Catholic system is the only church that qualifies not only as a woman, a church, but also as a beast, a political system, because it, has a, it is a political entity. And the hierarchy in that political entity is the same as you have with a king and the princes, with a cardinal representing the princes and the pope representing the kings. So, that system qualifies as a beast system, so it's a political system. And this beast has a mark. So if you want to know what the mark is, then the only place to find out is to ask the beast what it is, is his mark. Yes. Now, God also has a mark in the Bible, or a sign, or a symbol, or a banner. And if you read your Old Testament, you will find that the Sabbath was the sign or the mark that he is the one who is the sanctifying force in our lives. You'll read that in the book of Ezekiel and in many places in the Bible. Yes. So the sign of his authority is the Sabbath. For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, the springs of water, uh, that tells you that ownership is his through creation. Mm. And because he redeemed you out of Egypt, that tells you you are his through redemption. Now the Roman Catholic Church has plainly stated in many, many places uh, throughout history that the mark of her ecclesiastical power is that she is above the Bible and that she has transferred the solemnity of the biblical Sabbath to the first day of the week, and she uses that as a point. At the Council of Trent, she made it very, very plain. 
that this is her mark of ecclesiastic authority and that Protestants, in spite of what they say, that the Bible is their supreme authority, yes. are actually obedient to Rome rather than to the scriptures. So they say it is a mark of her ecclesiastical power. And this mark will be enforced and many, many writings throughout history and actions point to this exact same thing. Uh, Rome has ever been at war against the biblical Sabbath, which is the mark of God, and has replaced it with her mark of authority. So it's a question of obedience. So now, in, in the futuristic thinking, uh, this ideology of a mark which has a moral implication as to who do I acknowledge as the authority in my life, is it the God of the Bible or is it a church and its hierarchy? Which one is the authority in terms of my salvation and my obedience? So if the two come into, into conflict with each other, then that implies a choice. So if God asks me to acknowledge his authority and the church asks me to acknowledge her authority, then I have a choice. Now this chip... It is not improbable that such a mechanism can be employed. Yes. But it's not the mark of the beast. Because the beast is Roman Catholicism. And the beast has already defined what, and what her mark is. So the chip will enable you to do banking. It can be a means, let's put it this way, to determine how you do your banking but it is not the mark of the beast. It is a precursor, perhaps, mm -hmm. to the issue of not being able to buy or sell. But it is not a moral issue. It is not a moral issue how I approach my bank account. If I use a banking card, that is also a chip. Mm. It's just in a card. And I don't think God is concerned as to how I access my bank account. Now, this chip that they might implant into your hand is a, is a somewhat more elaborate system because it entails more than just that chip on a card. But you will remember that even the chip on the card has been modified since 9-11. Yes. Because there's a lot of extra data on that chip. Where you live, what your place of residence is, uh, many parameters associated with your identification number or social security number is associated with that chip. So whether it's on a card or whether it's in your hand, it's still an access and it's still a means of control. Yes. So yes, it can be in the system in terms of determining how you buy or sell, but it is not the mark because the mark has to be identified according to the biblical criteria. It is the mark of the beast. Beast is Catholicism and it has a mark of authority. Now, if people want to get more detail on this, they will have to do a serious Bible study. So there are a few uh, lectures on DVD that we've done in the past. Uh, the Crime of All Ages, for example, is a lecture on uh, all the statements by Rome regarding the transference of the Sabbath as a mark of her ecclesiastical power. Yes. There's another lecture that comes to mind which is uh, Two Beasts Become Friends, yes. which is a verse-for-verse -verse expose of Revelation chapter 13, where we discuss the two political systems that will be active in implementing the mark of the beast at the same time. And remember that the mark of the beast has to do with worship because it says in Revelation they worship the first beast. Now worship is associated with acknowledging the authority of. So I worship God because I acknowledge his authority in my life. He is higher than me. And I render that obedience which he requires because he has the authority. If an earthly system takes that authority 
and makes it its own and enforces a law or a mark which is contrary to God's, then I have a choice to make. Yes. So uh, what is the meaning of all of these things? There are some other lectures as well. Perhaps you can put a few links in that people can, can look at some of these lectures regarding these yes, issues. Yes, we will do that. I'll put the links down in the comments. Just another question on this RFID chip. Would you say it will be a moral choice if this chip will be enforced on people or forced on people to take it? That is a good question. Was it a moral choice when you received a bank card? No. It wasn't a moral choice. So it depends on what the moral issue is regarding this chip. It probably can encroach on moral issues if your personal privacy is uh, eroded as a consequence. But as we know, even with a card, your private <laughs> issues can be eroded. Yes. So, well, I think that people will resist a chip of that nature, although many countries have already, to some if, well, degree, introduced it. Yes. And uh, I don't think it is a moral issue if it entails just how you access uh, buying or selling or because of a cashless society or any one of those, any more than a credit card would be a moral issue. If there are other issues involved, then it might become a moral issue. But if it's just banking and accessing accounts, then I don't think it is a moral issue. Although in, in the philosophy out there, of course, it becomes a moral issue. But then the bank account and the accessing of the bank yes. account becomes the moral denominator rather than the Word of God. Yes. It, I see the same also on a, another question that we had in the comments before, uh, like we used in one of the episodes, the Apple computers. Can you... Alice, was there a comment? You told me about a comment that yes. uh, why were we using Apple computers? Well, you know, we are living in the world. But that doesn't mean that we should be of the world. Now, who controls the industries of the world? It is the mega corporations. And who controls the mega corporations? Well, according to the scripture, Babylon yes. controls the mega corporations. So there is a connection uh, between the religious and the economic world. And uh, we've had many lectures in the past on that issue, but you know, people would have to go through the entire Total Onslaught series yeah. to pick up those connections. But maybe they have time now. And they have to, I'm sure. Uh, to, to I will put it. that also in the comments it, below. Yeah, the Total Onslaught series is, is a very old series, but uh, in a sense it is timeless Definitely. because the, the issues remain exactly the same. I might have three more hairs <laughs> 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 yeah. than, I had, uh, than I have now when I made that series. But uh, it might be one to watch. Correct. Yeah, the players might also be, in, that you mentioned, they're already replaced with new ones, but the systems still stay the same. So regarding the Apple computers, uh, let's have a look at any issue. If you want to be part of this world mega economic structure, then you have to be part of that system. And basically that, con that system, according to the scripture, is not controlled by God, but by other forces, yes. esoteric forces. So whether I drive a mo motor vehicle with esoteric signs on it, whether I uh, tank uh, gas at a, at a fuel station, all of them are involved in these issues. For example, if you take some of the petroleum companies, they had interesting symbols and they've changed over the years as they've modified, but they still have esoteric connotations. I mean, one of the big companies at one stage had Pegasus, mm. the flying horse, the god of death. As, as their symbol. Now, who would want to put the god of death as their symbol, right? So my philosophy is simply this. I'm in the world and I have to make use of the systems in the world. 
but I don't have to be roped into the esoteric or philosophies of those systems. So can I, can I drive a car that belongs to a worldly system in order to do the Lord's work? Definitely. Of course I can. Can I use a computer in order to do the Lord's work? Definitely. I could also use it for ignoble uh, means or <laughs> reasons, and there are plenty of those available. Yes. But it is a moral choice whether I will use this product for noble purposes or ignoble purposes. And uh, as long as I use it for noble purposes, then I can use, let's put it bluntly, the devil's equipment and the devil's money to further, further the Lord's work. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. And then there's also some confusion about the little time of trouble and the big time of trouble. Can you maybe explain to us the difference? Okay. It, it is a progressive issue. Now, the little time of trouble is a time period before the implementation of the mark of the beast. So, in other words, turmoil in the world will increase, uh, natural disasters will become very prominent. Basically, you can go through the list of Matthew 24 and see what the issues will be at the end of time. Uh, there will be many messiahs. And even today, uh, there are some issues that the messiah is about to reveal himself and there's great excitement. But Jesus said, you know, when you hear he's in the inner room, when you hear he's in the desert, don't go there because as the lightning is visible from the east to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. So we have this period of time of great turmoil. And that is called the little time of trouble. When your, when your personal freedoms will be restricted and eventually the, the nations become angry and there's more and more of a clamor for morality. The world is going to pot, they will say. Uh, morality has gone out of the window and we have all of these turmoils and these calamities and maybe they'll even say these viruses because people have left God. Yes. Automatically that will lead people to start introducing religious legislation. Now if you take the Noahide laws that we talked about for example, they have a religious connotation because you have to acknowledge the one God and you may not blaspheme that God, that is a law. Yes. Now if that is a law then that means that at some stage it must be implemented. So there must be religious laws attached to those laws. And apparently there are a few hundred laws that are subsections of those laws that can be implemented. Now if you have to acknowledge the one God, then surely you must also have a day of worship for that one God. Yes. So all of these calamities and this little time of trouble where your personal freedoms are curtailed and where buying and selling becomes difficult because of circumstances which restrict human movement and human freedom will lead to the point where people say all of these things are happening because we have turned our back upon God. We have taken him out of the school system. We've taken him out of public life. We may not even pray. We uh, sacrifice children to Moloch, etc., etc., etc. Let's get back to God. That entails legislation. Mm. So eventually, the little time of trouble will then culminate in legal uh, issues and laws which will force you to adhere to a particular moral issue. And once those laws are enacted which are contrary to God's law, but not necessarily contrary to the laws of the beast, yes. which we are warned against, then you have a moral choice. And once that moral choice becomes the final issue, then you will have the great time of trouble 
and the plagues will start falling. So after those laws are enacted, there's still a short period when people must be able to make a moral choice. You can't have probation closed when the laws are made because when the laws are made, people must choose between God's law and man's law. And when they're in conflict with each other, it's a moral issue. It's an, it's an issue of worship. Yes. It uh, brings a thought to me about uh, in the spirit of prophecy, there was a quote. Um, there's a book, The Last Day Events, and chapter 10 deals with the little time of trouble. The commencement of that time of trouble here mentioned does not refer to the time when the plague shall begin to be poured out, but to a short period just before they are poured out, while Christ is in the sanctuary at that time. While the work of salvation is closing, trouble will be coming on the earth and the nations will be angry, yet held in check, so as to not prevent the work of the third angel. And that is interesting. That is interesting. In other words, that legislation, which is contrary to God's law, has the mark of the beast, has not yet been implemented. So we must be in the little time of trouble. Yes. Then comes the greater time of trouble, or the great time of trouble, after the implementation, after people have made a decision, then the plagues will fall. And God promises protection from the plagues for all who do not accept the mark of the beast. So it's very important that we understand the mark of the beast. That's why people should perhaps look at some of these lectures yes. to see uh, what the Bible has to say about it. Also, in that time of trouble, uh, there, that is the time of Jacob's trouble. Yes. Now, what was Jacob's trouble? Jacob had grievously sinned in the way in which he uh, went about depriving Esau of his birthright. And uh, in, in that sense, he was wrestling with God as to whether he was forgiven or not. So in that time when probation is closed, and there is basically nothing that you can do about your salvation other than rely on the one who has redeemed you, which is Jesus Christ, that is the time when you go through Jacob's trouble, when you wrestle with God and say, Lord, have I confessed my sins? Have I been forgiven all my sins? Uh, have you washed me in the blood of the Lamb? Is there any fault in me which has prevented you from doing this? This is the, the mental anguish and the turmoil. And uh, then faith comes in. Faith takes hold of the promises of God and faith does not let go of them just as Jacob didn't let go of Jesus with the angel when he wrestled with him. And he said, I will not let you go lest you bless me. That is our anguish. We cling in that time to Jesus and say, I will not let you go lest you bless me. And the Bible says he prevailed with God. And so everybody who has made Jesus his covering, his cleft in the rock, will prevail because Jesus will cover them with his righteousness. Also during the, the little time of trouble, there is still time to look after yourself, planting. Aha, yes. When you come to the big time of trouble and the plagues fall, then there is nothing that you can do anymore. You're totally reliant upon God. In fact, you will have to flee to the mountains because they will persecute God's people, those who refuse the mark of the beast, and proclaim them as enemies of the state. Because now the world has finally come together and decided to do one thing in unison, and here's a group that says, no, it's contrary to God's law, I'm not going to do it then there will be a huge anger and persecution. And then you have to flee to the mountains and you are totally reliant upon God. Then you claim the promises that your bread and water shall be sure. If necessary, God will provide manna from heaven or the ravens will feed you as in the times of yeah. Elijah. But in the little time of trouble, 
Secure for yourselves land where you can grow your own vegetables because the time of buying and selling will be very acute. Yes. So that must precede that time. And also it precedes the mark of the beast. So it has nothing to do with the buying and selling that will be totally cut off the possibility of buying and selling through the legislation of the mark of the beast, which has not yet been implemented. Yes. Then a, just a final question. Can you give us clarity on when the time of the end will commence? Well, if you want to know about the time of the end, you have to go back to this book again. Now, when you read in Daniel chapter 12, it tells you basically when the time of the end begins. And the time of the end, according to Daniel chapter 12, is at the close of the 1260 days which the reformers applying the day year principle referred to as the time of papal supremacy so once you look at that period when rome actually had supremacy over the world and its dictates or its moral statutes were the law of the land which is not the case now no was between 538 A.D. and 1798. In 1798, the political power of the Roman Catholic Church was taken away and she lost her beast political status and was only a woman, a church. But then in 1929, Mussolini gave back the papal states and she regained her political power so she again qualified as a beast and a woman. Yes. And since then she has been growing. The Bible calls it the healing of the wound. So the beast had a mortal wound. It stopped being a political system, 1798. It received its political status again in 1929. And eventually the whole world will follow the morality of that system. In other words, papal laws will become the law of the land. So the time of the end started at the end of the 1260 days, according to Daniel. So that is in 1798. That's when we have moved from that time period where she had absolute power to the time when she does not have absolute power. And then we will move back into a period where she regains that power. And we are there. Mm -hmm. We, were, we are there. The whole world is running to Rome for moral direction. Yes. And once Rome's laws become legal moral direction, then we are at the point when the world will wander after the beast, that political religio system. So that is the answer. According to Daniel, it commenced in 1798 and will culminate in the time period when she regains her political power by enforcing her laws, her moral values upon the entire world. Thank you, Walter, for that very insightful discussion once again. Can you please close off for us also with a word of prayer? Certainly. Heavenly Father, we all have questions. We all want to know where we stand in the stream of time. Time will no longer be an issue because the scriptures tell us that after the 2,300 days, time was no more. In other words, prophetic time. And so, Lord, we can only look at the signs that fulfill around us to give us an indication of where we are in the stream of time and help us to make a good application